Welcome to Moody Blooms. I'm Mary Ellen and in this episode we're going to learn about the Chrysula ovata golem jade and the Chrysula ovata hobbit jade. Both of these jades are very similar to one another and both names are taken from J.R.R. Tolkien's writings, sometimes referred to collectively as the Tolkien group. These two cultivars are often confused in literature by nurseries and are often used interchangeably. Chrysula ovata golem jade and Chrysula ovata hobbit are great plants to have because they're easy and low maintenance plants. It also adds a unique shape and texture to any succulent arrangement or landscape. They are both very similar looking plants and are often mistaken for one another. They both have unusual looking foliage and you can see why they're often mistaken for one another. Jade plants are a species of succulent plants in the genus Chrysula and family Crassulaceae. Crassula can either be pronounced Crassula or Crassula, and both are considered to be correct pronunciation. I actually use both pronunciations, it just really depends on the day. Both the Hobbit Jade and the Gollum Jade can be very easy to care for, you just have to get a few things down. These succulents are perfect for beginners or the forgetful gardener. They thrive in most indoor environments, making these unusual plants a great addition to any home or office. Chrysula ovata hobbit is a much loved jade plant. In warm climates, it can grow outdoors as a small shrub, but it also really shines as a low maintenance indoor plant because it tolerates low light conditions. When grown indoors, this plant stays small and its woody branches make a great bonsai tree. Chrysula ovata hobbit leaves are shaped more like a spoon with the edges curled in upon themselves. Instead of fully rounded leaves, they are more of a half circle, really tight and tall. The Chrysula ovata golem has elongated tubular concave leaves with puckered ends that appear like little suction cups or trumpet tips. The finger-like leaves range in color from deep green and the tips are tinged with red. The reddish hues on the tips intensify with sun exposure and cooler temperatures. The hobbit plant is very similar to the golem jade, whose names are of course both from the Lord of the Rings movie. These two plants are very similar and they're often used interchangeably. You can distinguish the two of them by looking at their leaves. The hobbit leaves have a curled leaf while Gollum's leaves are almost tubular with their reddish tint. This variety of jade can also be easily turned into a bonsai tree. If you're familiar with J.R.R. Tolkien's work, then the name Gollum will ring a bell. Gollum is an infamous character in Tolkien's popular books. The character Gollum is a disfigured hobbit brought on by a series of unfortunate twists of events. This plant is also known by common names such as ogre's ears, shrek's ears, or finger plants. Both the Chrysula ovata golem and the Chrysula ovata hobbit have very similar care requirements. Let's first discuss their lighting requirements. If kept indoors, place them in a bright location anywhere there's plenty of light. Near a south facing or west facing window will work well. These plants take on a deeper green hue when kept in shade or partial shade. It becomes lighter in color and the red tips are more pronounced with more sun exposure, especially in the Gollum Jade. If the plant starts to suffer from lack of light, move it to a brighter location. When your jade does not get sufficient light, it can become etiolated. This is when the plant starts stretching out and becomes leggy. The plant is literally stretching to obtain more light. This produces weak and sometimes stunted growth. For a more even growth rate, they prefer approximately four to six hours of bright light per day. Chrysula ovata golem jade or hobbit jade will not tolerate poor lighting conditions for prolonged periods of time. If your indoor space does not receive adequate lighting, no matter where you move the plant, consider using a grow light. Grow lights can help supplement your plant's lighting requirements, especially during those long dark winters if you live in a colder climate. When kept outdoors, position your plant where it will receive full sun to partial shade. Your Chrysula will love six to eight hours of bright sun during the day. Be sure to shelter from intense sun. Chrysulas do best in areas that receive plenty of bright sunlight. It can also tolerate full sun, but needs to gradually be acclimated to prevent sunburn. The plant takes on a lime green color with reddish tips with more sun exposure. When kept in the shade, it stays a deeper green. When acclimating to full sun, morning sun is generally better tolerated by succulents than more intense afternoon sun. From there, you can gradually transition to the more intense afternoon sun. Okay, next we have temperature. 
The Gollum and Hobbit Jade grow really anywhere as a houseplant. Outside, they grow best in mild climates, USDA hardiness zones 9 to 10. They can tolerate mild frost and slightly freezing temperatures as long as they are not for long periods of time. In colder climates, it's best to bring your container plants indoors in winter to protect them from frost. If you cannot bring your plants indoors, you can use frost cloths or mini greenhouses to help them survive in cold winter. Water. Gollum and jade plants tolerate extended drought. When kept in containers, be sure they have drainage holes and a gritty, well-draining soil. How often you water largely depends on the climate where you live. Water deeply, but only when the soil is completely dry. When the weather cools, be sure to reduce waterings, watering only enough to keep the leaves from shriveling. In humid locations, your plant will actually need less water. Plants indoors will also need much less water, especially if they're not receiving a lot of sunlight. Too much water and not enough light is a recipe for root rot for just about any succulent. Before watering, always be sure to check the moisture of the soil. The top inch of the soil needs to feel completely dry before watering again. If you're unsure, it's always best to underwater than overwater. Your plant will also let you know if it's not getting enough water through the leaves. They'll begin to pucker or wrinkle. If the leaves are plump and full, then they're getting sufficient water. If you're still unsure of how much water, you can use my foolproof way. Using a moisture meter is an inexpensive way to really make sure you're not overwatering. They are helpful for beginners or the novice gardener. In the description, I believe there's a link for one down below. Indoors or outdoors, they can tolerate locations with a lower amount of sunlight as long as the soil stays dry. Allowing the soil to stay dry helps these plants survive low light condition and reduces the risk of root rot. For healthier plants, break up their time in low light by moving pot plants to bright light every few weeks. So why does the Gollum or Hobbit Jade get wrinkly? The lower leaves of succulents tend to shrivel and die out during normal growth. If it's only the very bottom older leaves that are wrinkling and they're wrinkling from the outside ends in, and the stem and leaves don't look discolored or yellowing, it might actually just be thirsty. Watch it over the next few days after you water to see if the leaves get nice and plump again. Only water it again if they start to look a tad wrinkly and if the soil is completely dry. Another reason your jade plant could be getting wrinkly is due to mealybugs. These evil little buggers are seriously the devil. They suck the moisture from the plant which will result in shriveled leaves. Unfortunately, jades are susceptible to mealybugs. They can easily hide in the plant's many crevices. And these particular plants have so many little deep crevices, especially in the top of the golem jade where the little trumpet edges are. So be sure to, to keep an eye out on those. Sometimes they'll appear as a white, cottony, fluffy, web-like substance, or you may not see them at all. If the plant starts to grow misshapen, or wrinkle even with sufficient water, you may have a mealybug problem. Be sure to check your plants at each watering. You can also learn more about mealybugs and pest eradication in my video link in the top right. Okay, next we have soil. The Ovada, Gollum, and Hobbit prefer a well-draining soil. The right type of soil goes hand in hand with proper watering. I sometimes just use cactus potting mix and combine it with perlite for added drainage, but I also like to make my own succulent sandy soil. This adds more drainage to standard potting soil. I like a combination of potting soil with perlite or pumice and coarse sand. About a 2 one, one ratio. Next is propagation. Like other types of jade plants, these can easily be propagated through stem cuttings or leaves. When selecting a leaf to propagate, make sure it's a healthy new leaf for the best success rate. You may want to start with a few leaves because sometimes not all of them will make it till the end. The leaves should start shooting out roots in about two weeks or so. In a few more weeks, you'll notice a new baby plant emerging. The whole process can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, depending on your climate and growing conditions. So be sure to be patient. The easiest way to propagate is through stem cuttings. It also has a higher success rate. Be sure to use a sharp knife or pruning shears. Cut a small section of stem where they meet at the base. It's a good idea to obtain cuttings from healthy looking plants with plump leaves, not dehydrated or stressed plants. 
allow the cuttings to dry out for a few days so that the ends can callus over. An option is to dip the cut ends in a rooting hormone. I usually actually skip this step, but some people prefer using rooting hormones to speed up the process and also guarantee success. Next, place the cuttings in a well-draining soil in partial shade. Water lightly until roots form in the next few weeks. After about four to six weeks or longer, depending on your climate and conditions, the cutting should be fully rooted and you'll soon notice new growth developing on the top or the sides of the stem. Once fully rooted, switch to regular watering about once every 10 days or so and increase the amount of sunlight as the plant matures. Remember, most succulents need to gradually be acclimated to sun. Again, I don't like to water on a specific number of days. I really just kind of pay attention to the plant leaves and also the soil and how moist the soil actually feels. Water propagation also works well and is my favorite way to propagate. I love to be able to see the beautiful roots forming. Once you have a decent amount of roots, you can transplant them into soil and follow the same watering schedule as we discussed with the cuttings propagating in soil. Fertilizer. Jade plants actually don't need much fertilizer. A balanced liquid fertilizer should be applied at half strength. Apply about every two to three weeks during the growing season, which is typically spring and summer months. Refrain from fertilizing towards the end of the fall season and during the winter months. Blooms. Like other jade plants, the Crisula ovata golem and hobbit jade plants can bloom in winter with impressive clusters of delicate pinkish white star-like flowers. While it is always amazing to have your succulents bloom, it's not always an easy feat. A lot will depend on environmental factors beyond your control. So how do we encourage Crisulas to bloom? Well, one thing is the plant's maturity. Make sure the plant is mature enough. When a plant blooms, it means it's ready to reproduce. If the plant is too young, it simply will not be ready to reproduce and therefore will not bloom. Give the plant some time. Usually if the plant is over three years old and beyond, it's mature enough to bloom. Plenty of light. Make sure the plants are receiving adequate sunlight throughout the year and are kept in a bright location even during the colder winter months. You also need proper temperatures for it to bloom. They need a distinct difference in night and day temperatures as well as summer and winter months. Succulents favor cooler outdoor nighttime temperatures of at least 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit or indoor night temperatures of at least 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Especially when kept in a controlled environment, succulents prefer a marked difference between their night and day temperatures to mimic their natural habitat, with the cool night temperatures having an integral part in the plant's growth cycle. Overwintering is also important if you want to see your succulents bloom. This can be achieved by keeping them cool and relatively dry in the winter months. Keep them cool during the winter months with temperatures just above freezing, between 35 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. If kept indoors during winter, have them in a non-heated room if possible, or keep the temperatures low to provide them cold winter periods that they need to bloom. Feed or fertilize. While fertilizing is not necessary, giving your plants the nutrients they need will help ensure proper growth and encourage blooms. It takes a lot of energy for plants to produce flowers and feeding them extra nutrients will help them supplement their needs during flowering seasons. The most common recommendations is to fertilize during the active growing season or during spring and summer months. I hope you learned something new about the Crisula ovata golem and the Crisula ovata hobbit jade today. And if you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe to be notified of new videos and give it a big thumbs up if you enjoy our content. We hope to see you next time on Moody Blooms.